Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you. In this video, I am discussing my learnings from Middle Discourses 104. It is at Samagama, also known as Samagama Sutta. Now, this discourse is basically intended for monastics uh, who are part of the Sangha and uh, some disciplinary rules that Buddha laid out for them. So, I will not go in detail into this. The link to the discourse is given in the description uh, because we are lay people. So, I will not go into uh, detail about this monastic. There is a full monastic code which is Venya code which is there uh, about monastics and how their kind of, kind of uh, the disputes are resolved so this is uh, on the same lines uh, so basically the context of this discourse is that uh, after the death of Mahavir the Jain ascetic of the Natika clan uh, recently passed away at Pava uh, with the passing of uh, uh, Mahavira they, the, the Jain uh, uh, Sangha it broke into two and there were a lot of factions arguing quarreling disputing and the the you know the ascetics from that jain uh, 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 sangha they were you know wounding them each other with bad words that my doctrine is right your doctrine is wrong right and all all of those things were happening and there was nothing but slaughter going on among the jain ascetics and the jain natikas white clothed lay disciples were disillusioned dismayed and disappointed in the jain ascetics they were equally disappointed with the teaching and training, so poorly explained and poorly propounded, right? So all that thing was happening. Now at that time, there was this rainy season that was happening near Pava and a novice Kunda went up to the, see Ananda. Ananda was one of the chief disciples of the Buddha and also the Buddha's attendant. And he went up to him and said, see, this is all that is happening after the death of uh, uh, Mahavira. So... Ananda said to him that we should go and see Buddha on this matter. So when they went up and they informed the Buddha that all this was happening, uh, Ananda, see Ananda had this kind of foresight that, you know, this same thing should not happen after Buddha's passing. So he said, when the Buddha has passed away, let no dispute arise in the Sangha. For such a dispute would be for the hurt and unhappiness for the people, for the harm, hurt and suffering of gods and humans. So Buddha said that, Ananda, have you ever seen two mendicants? who disagree regarding the things that I have taught. So, Ananda said, no sir, I have not till now seen such thing. But, there are some individuals who appear to live obedient to the Buddha. But when the Buddha has passed away, they might create a dispute in the Sangha regarding livelihood or the monastic code. And such a dispute would not be helpful for anyone. So then, Buddha understood his concern and Buddha said, Ananda, dispute about livelihood or the monastic code is a minor matter. But should a dispute arise in the Sangha concerning the path or the practice? So Buddha was mainly concerned with any dispute with respect to the path or the practice what Buddha taught to be liberated from suffering. If a dispute is there on that, then Buddha was, was more concerned with that. Buddha said that would be for a hurt and unhappiness of the people. Then Buddha said that there are six roots for the argument. What are the six roots? Mendicant is irritable and hostile. That means they lack respect, reverence for the teacher and all these things. Second, they are offensive. Third, they are jealous and stingy. Fourth, they are devious and is deceitful. Fifth, they have corrupt wishes and wrong view. Sixth, they are attached to their own views, holding them tight, refusing to let go. Now, Buddha said four kinds of disciplinary issues. Uh, what kind of, dis what for? Disciplinary issues due to disputes, acquisitions, offenses or proceedings. And there are seven methods. For settlement of any disciplinary issues, Buddha said seven methods. What are the seven methods? Removal in the presence of those concerned. Removal by the accurate recollection. Removal due to recovery from madness. Offense should be acknowledged. Decision of a majority. And verdict of an aggravated misconduct. And covering over with grass. Right? So these are the seven ways that Buddha said that the disciplinary issues would be now, just Buddha gives after this a kind of a brief on what is the meaning of the individual methods. For example, like f removal in presence. That means when mendicants are disputing, this is the teaching, this is the monastic law. They should all sit together in harmony, go through the guidelines of the teaching and resolve in the presence of those concerned. That is removal with presence. Second, decision of majority. So even if that issue could not be sorted out by in the discussion in the presence, they should go to another monastery and discuss with more bhikkhus and then a decision by majority can be taken. Third, if there is a removal by how to 
remove by accurate recollection. So if the mendicant accuses, if the mendicants accuse a mendicant of a serious offence, then it then it is the question has to be asked to that mendicant who has done the offence. Do you recall committing this kind of a serious offence that entails expulsion or close to it? So that way you can just you know uh, find out, rec recollect, right? And from the mendicants who have actually are alleging they should be asked to recollect then removal by rec recovery from madness so here it is said that uh, the the mendicants uh, who has someone who has done the offense he should be questioned like continuously questioned and finally that person realizes that sorry i had gone mad i was out of my mind and while i was mad i did and said many things that are because some, sometimes what happens is out of our anger and you know when our mind is totally lost in anger or madness we don't remember the exact details of that because our mind is totally blocked at that time by anger or madness or something. So, if that is the mendicant acknowledges that yes, I was at a mad state at that time, so that is recovery from madness. Then acknowledging of an offense. This is whereby uh, that a mendicant, whether accused or not, recollects an offense that he has committed, some violation he has committed of the uh, of the Sangha rules. He approaches a more senior mendicant and bows down and says that I have fallen into such and such offence, I confess it. Senior mendicant says, do you see it? He says, yes, I see it. Then restrain yourself in, in future. And the mendicant agrees that he will restrain. That is one of the easy ways to kind of acknowledge the offence and get over it. Then verdict of aggravated misconduct. This is whereby a someone says that I have made a light misconduct. But on continuous questioning, he says, yes, I was mistaken. I have made a grave misconduct. And he acknowledges that he has made a grave misconduct, right? Then covering over with grass is where the, if the dispute could not be settled in many of the other ways, uh, both the parties, they there is a Sangha meeting that gets organized. Both the parties uh, are kind of uh, disclose in the middle of the Sangha by covering over with grass any offenses committed by venerables and by myself. The, the party, both the parties, they submit the offenses that are covered that, are, that, that have been done in a covered with grass. So that is one more way. Now I don't know the details of how this thing happens because I'm not a monastic, but these are some ways that have been given. I'm sure there are now other ways also because as the monastic code developed, there may be other ways. So I'm not very sure on that. Um, there is a book, Bhikkhu's Guide for Lay People, uh, Bhikkhu's Guide for Lay People in, in which the monastic codes and all things, these things are you know, explained for lay people to understand. Maybe that book you can check uh, on Google and uh, that can provide more information here. Then uh, Buddha covers the six warm-hearted qualities. Now these six warm-hearted qualities are actually uh, already covered in MN 48, Middle Discourse is 48. So I will not cover it here again. You can check out that discourse. You can just type in the search bar MN 48 and you'll be able to find that discourse where Buddha has given uh, 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 idea about the six warm-hearted qualities, right? So this is a, a short video that uh, I hope it helps about what is MN104. Do share your insights and thoughts in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video. Namo.